Here we go. Oh. 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 Zero to hundred in. Oh. Mother. Oh. Guys, what the f Hey guys, check this out. We are here with the Ionic 5N, finally. I'm so, so excited because we get to take a look at this really exciting blue EV SUV that is actually a extremely potent high performance car with a lot of gimmicks that a lot of people don't love, but actually comes together and makes one of the best packages. I genuinely have my faith restored in electric cars and I think you will too. So today we're gonna go for a full review of this Ionic 5N. Again, I'm so excited. We'll have a look at the exterior all of the changes, move on to the interior because it's very different to a standard Ionic 5. Then we're going to launch this thing. We're going to time it 0 to 100, see just how quick it is. They claim it's like 3.3 seconds, stupidly fast. We're of course going to drive this thing on the road, give it so much sauce and quite terrifying sauce. And then we're going to take this thing out on the track. You could probably hear tires squelching. We're here at Sydney Motorsport Park. And then we're going to end on our final thoughts. Should you buy a Hyundai Ionic 5N? Let's get into it. All right. Alrighty guys, let's now talk about the exterior, but very quickly before we do, I want to remind you that you can buy one of these through us because we will get you the absolute best prices from our thousands of dealers. We literally make them fight together. We get a small commission no matter what you pay. So we're on your side and you will always get the best prices with in-stock cars. So head to carsource.com forward slash buy if you want to buy one of these or anything else. I've linked that down below. Let's talk about the way that this thing looks because it is finished in performance blue. That is the hero color of Hyundai's N division, which stands for Namyang, which is the proving track of Hyundai. And I do absolutely love it. We got the matte finish here, which is $1,000 extra. I don't know if I would recommend matte finish on a car like this, just because if it gets a stone chip, it's really hard to repair. It's also has to be hand washed. There's a few things, but you can get this in a metallic performance blue and I would do that. Blacked out Hyundai badge here with the flat badging there too. You can see it looks entirely different from the Ionic 5, the regular one, the boring one now because it's the end. So you do get the same cool power parametric pixel daytime running lights with some really bright LEDs in there as well. Completely blacked out front area here. The end badge, a little 360 camera. You got this very cool oh, effect here. I don't know what you call that, but it looks cool. It's almost like venting. The real venting though is down here. So this thing has really powerful motors and batteries that need a lot of cooling. And we'll show that when we're on the track, but you can change the way that it cools the battery. And as a result, you actually have a lot more air going into this than any other Ionic 5, but you've also got active shutters here to make it a bit more efficient though. Yeah, you'll see it's not the most efficient electric car out there, but who the f cares. It's an Ionic 5N. You've also got active aero here to streamline air over the side. And that's a very cool thing. And I'll show you why in a second. All right, let's check out the side. All righty, let's talk about the way that this thing looks on the side. And this is what's really cool. So these are 21 inch wheels, which are massive. And I thought that that would ruin the ride. But this thing has had a total suspension overhaul, which actually makes this ride incredibly well. Again, we'll come back to that when we drive. It's actually got aero covers, which you can take out. But if you do, you ruin the air streamlining over the side and these are completely compatible with running laps. In fact, this thing has been benchmarked to do the Nürburgring twice with these on. So that's very impressive. You have this body colored skirting here. It's not black scratchy plastic or piano black, none, no bullshit like that though this is. But you do have a 360 camera again there with parametric pixel indicators on the side. You have that really cool cutout here, which is a very aggressive look. You have the pop out door handles with keyless entry and go very tinted price privacy glass here. Down the bottom, you have this orange color here, which gives it a nice cool look. It's not red, even though it might look it in video. Quite different, but I kind of like it. And then you have even more active error on the side with this really pronounced side skirt here. And then otherwise it looks like a massive hatchback because really that's what it is. It does sit quite low for an SUV, which is so important as you'll see when you take it out on the track, it does not feel like an SUV, rather just a big hot hatch. And it looks at two at the back, that is so cool. You've also got your automatic charge port here. This thing supports up to 350 kilowatts of fast DC charging because it is on an 800 volt architecture. It's also got vehicle to load capability. So you can plug in your toaster if you want to. There's also a household socket in the back seat if you want to do the same. All right, let's check out the bum. Alrighty, let's talk about the bum 
now of the Ionic 5N, and honestly, I reckon this is my favorite angle just because it's so aggressive. You have this massive spoiler here that does actually provide some downforce. You have your third brake light up here. It's kind of like a rain light on a racing car. Very cool. You have more parametric pixels, baby, and it does look very nice. I love the taillights. End badge there. You've got some checkered flags there, but they're actually parametric pixels. And you've got some fake aero here, including a massive, massive diffuser, which I'm actually not sure if that's real aero or not. You can let me know in the comment section below. And of course, you have your Ionic 5 badge there. Overall, I love the way that this thing looks. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's stunning. I think they've done a great job. But you can let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you like the looks of the Ionic 5N? I'm curious to know what you think. Alrighty, let's talk about bum space now. So of course, for 111 grand, you get a powered tailgate. Very nice to see. You actually get less space than a regular Ionic 5 by about 50 liters. So it's 480 liters of space here. It's pretty okay. Definitely not the best out there. You see this thing has a big old rear electric motor and that does eat into back cargo space. You do have a uh, very little uh, underfloor storage, but they've clearly tried. You can also drop the rear seats, then you get like 1500 liters of boot space. And in that case, it is very, very practical. Look, is it the most practical uh, SUV in the world? Definitely not, but is it fine? Absolutely. Let's check out the interior. Alrighty guys, coming into the interior now of the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. And I think that this is probably where the most disappointment comes out because, ugh, ugh. Oh, that's a lot of uh, scratchy material. Some soft, some soft, I'll admit, like here on the doors. But yes, this doesn't necessarily feel like a $111,000 place to be, especially when you get things like this. Oh, the whole car's rolling. Yes, that is indeed a manual adjustable seat. But I'll be totally honest with you guys, I don't really care. So let's talk about the end specific stuff you get in here, because frankly, if you have a look at it, it is very different to a current Ionic 5. So for example, this leather steering wheel feels really nice in the hands, love the blue stitching, but this is the new end steering wheel and it does have a bunch of buttons on it, including your level two autonomous driving, which debuts on the Ionic 5N. So it essentially is an upgrade to the existing steering you down a highway. It'll also change lanes for you as well, which is pretty cool. You have your adjustable end buttons here, which you can map to pretty much any end function you want. You have your drive mode selector, your normal plebeian drive modes like eco, normal and sport. Uh. You've also got your NGB, which means N green boost. And that essentially unlocks full power. And you'll see that when we drive this in a moment. It's f***ing mental. You have paddles here, which you can use for your regenerative braking, changing that. Or if you've mapped it like I have here, press that. Now we're in dual clutch mode and listen to this. <laughs> now look what happens when you put it into end mode with the same sound. <laughs> You hear the crackles? Yes, this thing has three different sound modes, but again, we'll play around with that when we're driving it because all of them have their own unique ways of changing the sounds when you upshift and there's a lot of complexity to it, but I'll simplify it a bit later. Very cool, one more time. <laughs> There's more unique stuff here though. So this whole center tunnel is unique to the Ionic 5N because you actually need something to brace your leg on when you're turning the car because it has so much power and so much G-force in every direction. So they've actually added this thigh rest here and this whole center console is part of that. It does feel a bit shaky, maybe a little bit flimsy and that's kind of where you get that scratchy plastic and yeah, they've definitely had to build this interior to a cost to make sure that the price isn't even more expensive than it already is. You do get some nice features though, a couple of USB-C ports, a wireless charger here, some little storage to the side too. You've also got another USB-C port there, a 12 volt socket here, heaps of storage here as well with hidden cup holders. You have this sliding center armrest and there is some more storage in there. So storage is still plenty, but they've had to put this in here so you don't end up on the other side of the car when you're turning the steering wheel really hard. Crazy stuff. The glove box is a pretty decent size, though not the drawer that you get in the regular Ionic. these seats. So they've actually been lowered to get a lower center of gravity and to make it feel a bit sportier. They're actually Alcantara and leather and they do feel so nice. I drove this car today for about five hours, no sore back at all. And you get the glowing N light in there as well. Very cool. Of course, the N performance blue is dotted around the interior. You've got some piping here, some faux stitching here and here. And you've also got some checkered flags over here. 
technology has also been improved. So you get these dual displays here that are running the latest Hyundai software and they are really good, so snappy. You now get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which took them way too long to do, but at least you get it now. You also have this N mode here, which is pretty crazy. It pulls up this very cool menu. And from here, you have all your N track settings and N battery settings. You can also change the torque distribution and a few more things, which I'll run through when we go on the track soon. But you can also set up your custom drive modes however you like, and you can map that to the steering wheel too. You have your launch control button there, G-forces, and more performance options, including the N active sounds, which by the way, they do play on the outside of the car as well, though you can turn that off. So it's very customizable and I really like that. You also get a Bose sound system in here, which does sound really, really good. Like one of the best I've tested in an electric car. And also up here, you have a digital mirror, which is awesome. It means that you can really clearly see behind you, even if you've got a lot of stuff in the back or you're on track, that has been really helpful. The digital instrument cluster up in front of you is again, the new one. So now you get this small minimalist style to it. But of course, when you put it into N mode, it gives you a very cool center dial and you can see your motor temperatures, your battery temperatures. And then on the right hand side, you have a bunch of track specific menus. So yeah, very, very cool indeed. And then up ahead of you is your heads up display. It does show a bunch of information including your autonomous driving stuff. And also when you go into that dual clutch mode, you have a tachometer in front of you. It's a fake tachometer, but this thing simulates real gears and it does it so well. Again, you'll see that in a moment. But yeah, overall, I absolutely love the interior. It does feel really nice, but as soon as you start to go searching for it, you can see that they've had to cheap out a bit on the interior just to make it a bit more accessible at its price point. You know, if they did things like leather on the dash and nicer materials even, well, of course, that's gonna start to make this thing way more accessible expensive. Alrighty, let's check out the back seats. Okay, so coming to the back seats now, it is really impressive for the most part though. There is one thing I don't love and that is that the skateboard configuration of the battery, i.e. the battery lives in the floor and then of course you have your wheels at all four corners but unfortunately that does raise up the floor and because the seats here are actually lower down, it means that you cannot get your foot underneath the driver's seat but also that your legs are at a really high angle which I don't love and it's not great in the standard Ionic 5 and it's not great here either. You do have a completely flat floor though, so that's awesome. You get a couple of USB-C ports here and some air vents here, which is nice to see. These seats, again, are the beautiful Alcantara and leather, feel really nice. You have this pull-down center armrest with a couple more cup holders. You have this cool, like, checkered flag moniker here. You've also got the N badge at the back, so you never forget what you're sitting in. And the good news is that because I am sitting so much higher than the front seat, I have a great view around. Material choices don't actually take a hit in the back either, so this is nice and soft touch. You have a nice soft touch area here with this really cool ambient lighting as well. And you've also got, oh, sunshades. That's pretty nice to have. And so really for the most part, it's very thoughtfully laid out back here. I do just wish that my legs weren't so high up and I'm only 5'11", so really not that tall. But as you can see, I've got plenty of leg room and plenty of head room as well. So very good. Alrighty, let's launch the Ionic 5N. Alrighty guys, now we are going to launch this thing before we take it on the road. So we have launch control here. We are going to brake boost that we're in end mode. I can't wait to see what we're gonna do. Here we go, mummies and daddies. Here we go. Oh. 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 <laughs> Zero to 100 in 3.39 seconds. That is unbelievably fast. Ah! All right, let's drive this thing on the road before we come back to the track. Alrighty guys, the moment we have all been waiting for, I'm so excited. Oh, it's the silly little safety systems. Now I gotta turn it off. Oh, wrong button. Shut up. All right, all right, driver attention warning. Oh, speed limit, information. I think that's all we need. Alrighty. Now we're driving the Ionic 5N. I goddamn hate those systems. Anyway, you know what? Let's not worry about that now. Let's put a little, let's put a little grin on my face by putting the car into N mode, and then we're gonna put the car into dual clutch mode. Downshift. Oh! Oh! Holy fuck! Oh! Mother fucker! Oh! Guys, what the f What the freak? That is insane, guys. Okay, so 
if I can manage to get out some words, let's talk about what this thing has. So it has a dual motor setup, front and rear. The rear puts out more power and torque than the front. I'll put that up on the screen now. But combined, they have 448 kilowatt of power. That is insane. I've forgotten the newton meters off my head, but I'll put that up on the screen now too. What I haven't forgotten is when you press N grin boost here, and now we have, oh shit, oh fuck. We have 478 kilowatt of power, 770 newton meters of torque. Far out, guys. Oh my God. Okay, what I wanna stress to you is that not only is this thing fast, it's fast, putting traction back on, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> but when you've got it, especially in this dual clutch mode, it feels literally like a race car. It doesn't have a real dual clutch, obviously. There is a single gear, right? And it's just, it's just single. But the way that it, it works it, it actually makes it feel as if there is and you get a nice little shove. It will do a little fart on upshift because of course we have it in the ignition mode, which is to copy well, essentially like the i30N. Can you hear the crackles and pops? Obviously none of that is real, but it adds to the experience. That is insane. I'm so happy we have these big brakes on here as well because, well, you kind of need it. <laughs> this thing weighs 2.2 tons, but it is so nimble. We have a multi-clutch pack limited slip differential in the rear. You can actually get the back end rotating around, but thankfully when you've got the traction on, it, it doesn't slip out on you, but it really can if you're not careful when you turn traction off. I want to show you guys this. This is the custom mode, so I'll change it here. We've got it set up on this. And now we're in supersonic. Oh, it's supersonic. <laughs> okay, this is a bit gimmicky. It does a sonic boom when you upshift. <laughs> oh, I don't like this one as much, uh, to be honest, I really don't. And of course, let's try the other sound, evolution. This is apparently the future of sound. I don't know. Holy moly, it's so silly. All right, let's put it back into ignition. I'm gonna take it out of the dual clutch mode. Oh. Yeah, look, this thing is mega, mega fast, guys. Oh. But the amazing thing is how planted it is. It's got extra bracing underneath, more spot welds. The suspension geometry is entirely different. It's entirely different to before. And apparently that means that this, the NVH in here, or the sound inside the cabin, is actually quieter than a regular Ionic 5N. And Grim Boost, off we go. Oh, oh. This is sickness inducing. But I love the dual clutch mode because honestly, this is what makes it feel like a normal car. I feel like we finally have a motion in an electric car, which we have never had before. And watch this guys, downshift, it'll actually bounce off. I was going too fast there. <laughs> Let's try that in first gear, shall we? <laughs> wow, look at the cornering ability of this, guys. The steering, by the way, guys, the steering, completely different to a regular Ionic. It's also got torque, the back end came out there. It's also got torque vectoring. Oh, and the torque vectoring is at the front wheel, so it breaks the inside wheel. So you get this dual effect of a real limited slip differential in the rear, an ELSD. Hyundai have made something so special so special and it doesn't feel like a piece of shit. it's not boring it's just right oh what a fantastic job hyundai have done well done you've nailed it you've truly nailed it and i should say i'm having a lot of fun in this mode but if we go back to eco normal so normal and sport have both been tuned in Australia. So that's the Australian tune on these ones. It's when you put it into N mode that it's a global tune. However, Australia has actually had a huge amount of... Ugh. 
keep falling. We're going too fast. My G's are beat, but I've got too many G's going on here. So yes, Australia has had quite a lot to do in the global development of this car. By the way, you can have this dual clutch mode. You can set it up here and it can be in any mode you're in. So for example, we're in normal mode now. If I put my foot down, it'll actually drop a gear or at least simulate that. So do it. I can't tell you, it is indecipherable to a normal dual clutch transmission. Indecipherable. I was just in Portugal driving dual clutch transmissions in the new X2 M35i and Mini Countryman, and this is the same, but without the stupid hesitation when you take off. Unreal. The only thing, the only negative I have about this car is battery. The battery size is 84 kilowatt hours, which is actually quite big. It's also using Hyundai's fourth generation battery technology. It's something like 30% more efficient. And really what that translates to is a WLTP of 448 kilometers or a claimed range of 448 kilometers, but you're not gonna get that. In fact, you're probably not gonna get very close to it. So I've been driving like an idiot. I can't trust what's on the screen here. It's definitely not 54.9. Over the life of this car though, including track days, it's sitting at 29. 9.8 kilowatts hours. That's huge. It means that the technically the real world range is about 300 kilometers on this car. And so yes, if you're driving it mainly in town and you're not tracking this thing, you know, you, you'll probably get close to that 448. You'll probably get like high 300s. But the reality is just like the i30N or the i30 sedan N or the Kona N, if you're giving this thing a lot of source, it's gonna use up a lot of range and a lot of battery power. And it's the exact same issue in any high performance car you put your foot down in. It's one of those things that you, you've got to live with, I suppose. But thankfully, it does have very fast charging, 350 kilowatt charging, because it's on a new 800 volt architecture. Seriously, the eGMP platform that underpins this car is one of the best, at least for now. And I really hope that other manufacturers benchmark this car because it is at the top. And with that, before we head onto the track, I'm gonna give this thing some Engrin boost source. Press it, here we go. Jesus. Oh. Oh, it just, it doesn't stop pulling. What the fuck? Hyundai, you cheeky fucking bugger. You've done it. All right, guys, let's uh, let's take this thing on the track. All righty, guys. So, driving the Ionic 5N on track. Oh, this thing is so fast. Now, as you can tell, we're not in dual clutch mode, but I much prefer dual clutch mode. And everyone you speak to also prefers dual clutch mode because it gives you so much control. So, what you'll notice about the Ionic 5N is how competent it is, but also how rear wheel drive biased it is. It's very comfortable to spin out the back if you wanted to, but you don't need to either. It is a serious weapon. Whew. Seriously guys, it's on another level, but I would say it requires some skill. I'm not saying I have a lot of it, but uh, I've been on a few track days, and if this is your first track car, you definitely want to take it easy because it's very easy for the back end to rotate around and to get very fast very quickly. We're on the straight here. Let's see how fast we can get. Holy moly. We're at Sydney Motorsport Park, and it's, uh, it's one of those tracks where it's easy to go very, very fast, but also things to go wrong if you're not careful. The handling is unbelievably good and the dual clutch mode seriously feels like a dual clutch. It's that good. Oh, back end's rotating around. <laughs> we can also do a few different things on track. So I would do this before you start driving, but we have something called torque distribution where we can change the torque split to 100% front or 100% rear. Don't really want to do that right now, to be honest. We also have something called end pedal. And if we turn that on, it actually changes the regeneration of the car to give it max regen, but it also acts almost as a, as a parking brake. So again, very easy to lose the rear end on this. So I'd be very careful. We have our race mode. And that provides maximum cooling for the battery so you can keep this thing going. It's very impressive. And also a drift optimizer, which I'm not gonna put on because essentially it helps you drift. But we have gone sideways a few times today and I'll show you a few images of that. It looks pretty cool. Back into dual clutch mode though. Oh, it's so fast. 
We also have end battery here and we can put it in drag mode, which optimizes the temperature for just single run drags or track mode, which is essentially race mode, but more endurance focused. It seriously is such an impressive package. And so fast. I'll take it out of the dual clutch. It just builds speed and builds speed. It's seriously one of the fastest, most capable cars I've driven, and it's a 2.2 ton beast. It's unbelievably good, guys. <sighs> I've got such a smile on my face. The other thing, it's the brakes. It's got 400 millimeter discs at the front, 380 at the rear, and you need it, because otherwise this thing is just, I don't know, it's, it's insane. Oh, back end came out there. But seriously, these brakes, Full ABS, it stops very quickly. We don't want that though. Oh, oh, f oh my God. Oh, wow, what a competent car, how awesome. Alrighty guys, let's get into our final thoughts. Alrighty guys, final thoughts on the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. What a absolute mammoth of a couple of days it's been driving this thing around it is really everything i had hoped for and so much more that dual clutch feature is seriously incredible it isn't at all gimmicky and it makes this almost 500 kilowatt beast so much better i love the design the interior okay it definitely could be a bit better but you don't want to be spending more money so i'm not complaining at all this is one of the best electric cars i have ever driven if not the best and i mean that and if you want to buy one of these or any other car make sure you check out carsource.com forward slash buy and we will help you get the best deals best prices and actual in stock cars Alrighty, guys ciao for now